And now we're going to have to spend the rest of the summer listening to a bunch of guys that's 5'9", hollering at they six feet. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. The wireless woman. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to my crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome back Wi-Fi's to my GPE episode of The Wireless Woman. And today we are going to be talking all about how black women we have let these power dynamics, these desirability politics get out of control. And now we are dealing with a whole nation of narcissistic black men running back and forth with their clubs out in every community. I mean, they are rocking out with their cock out. And we gonna have to find a way to go ahead and pull that back. But before we get into today's content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my beautiful black women to the front of the class. It is time for us to read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right. Welcome back, Wi-Fi's, to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. And make sure, if you haven't already, to subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and drop me that fire headphones emoji down in the comments. And if you're digging the content, go ahead and share it for me. Everybody want to be black, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. So today we are going to talk about GPE. What is GPE? One might ask. And I have to say that in this current climate of people talking so much about B D E or B B C. I feel like there's a need for us as women to insert ourselves back into the conversation about the power dynamics that are inherent in our sexual relationships with each other. I feel like we as women have to insert ourselves back into these power dynamics. It's almost like people have forgotten the power of the P. Ain't even do nothing much in his ass in love. Power to the pussy. Um. And in the event that people have, I am here to remind you of it. And I am also here to remind you that, as always, Magneto was right. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it. By any means necessary. Now, I'm not entirely sure where this whole gender war concept came from. And I know that it is completely detrimental to the black community. It is just something that we are not going to be able to withstand. It's kind of like this war with Russia and Ukraine where it's like a very real thing. It's really happening. People are being devastated by it. However, it doesn't really seem to impact life in the communities outside of that region of the world. That's what this whole gender war is like. It's completely ransacking 
in debilitating the black female community. So we are going to have to take our power back. I'm reminded of the scene in Hancock where the little villains are banding together and he's like, you're going to have to take your power back. You know, where Hancock has become such a menace that all of these people are like, hey, even if I can't overcome them, even if you can't overcome them, maybe if we work together in concert with each other, we can actually be a formidable foe, which Hancock is like this anti-hero. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? We don't know. And that is the problem for us black women. We have to recognize that whether our men are good or bad or whatever the case is, has absolutely nothing to do with us, has absolutely no bearings on what we as a collective community have to do and be. She want to go viral. viral. We fucking for hours. That pussy got power. That pussy got power. So when it comes to GPE, we're going to have to recognize that although we're not responsible for a lot of the state of the present community, we do still have power. All of the things that are being said about us on these social media platforms and campaigns would not be an issue if they didn't want us you know i happen to check out some comments that umar johnson was saying a few weeks back where he was talking about how you know women's boxes get run down and they need to make sure that they are preserving themselves for men i understand you gotta pop that coochie for two or three i get it i get it you want to experiment with i get it i get it but at some point you got to calm it all down at some point you got to calm it all down get focused and start looking for your mate because black women are the last married and the first divorced you ain't got time to wait till you're 40 to start looking for your husband and i think that's been the message most of our lives you know the patriarchy has women in a pigeonhole where our p makes the world go round it's honestly the motivation that whole all of these groups of men have to do anything great. I'm pretty sure they would still be in a cave without fire, dragging their knuckles and scratching their balls if it wasn't for the power of the P. If it wasn't for women needing a home and needing men to cultivate themselves in order to be in relationship with them. Like, honestly, we created these monsters. Everybody know I'm a motherfucking monster. Literally by birthing them through our vaginas <laughs> and figuratively by birthing them through our vaginas. And you have to understand that a lot of the audacity that these men are getting is coming from their need to be validated by women. I'm not sure when men became like a prize. I'm not really sure when like they went from I have a dream to I am the prize. But alas, we find ourselves here. And when we give the power to them to determine the grounds on which we relate to each other, we see what has happened. Men are coming into this having to create their utility, having to create their lives, and are often put into these positions where they have to perform for modern women today, while modern women sit back like this and just wait for the perfect man to occur. Back in the day, it used to be kind of taboo for guys to go to uh, escorts, and I, I've openly promoted I've taken an escort to a company function. Really? It, it helped my fucking career. Wow. You that. can't pick and choose when you want and traditional. traditional old school guy. My grandma, my grandfather did X, Y, and Z. My grandfather provided, and your grandmother shut up and took what came with that. Your grandmother knew how to cook a sweet potato pie. You don't. So, ladies, it is time for us to take our power back and be a little candid and honest in this moment, ladies, as we are discussing this issue ad nauseum. Now, there are some things that expire. 
within the dynamic between men and women, but it is not this veg, baby. Like they literally have us like as if we have this expiration date and it's going bad like milk. And if we're looking at the battery life of these organs that we have, Theirs probably going to go before ours does. And you have these old, raggedy, dusty, wrinkly, ball sack men trying to crush the confidence of young, supple, 25-year-old women when those of us who are in our later 30s are being told they're leftover women. <laughs> but those of us who are in our later 30s, 40s, and 50s, Baby, maybe even 60s. Well, we know that's not true. And furthermore, let's give it up for leftovers. I don't feel like leftovers get their just due. Because I got to tell you, baby, day two on some leftovers. Leftovers are like thick thighs. They save lives. Because when you're coming home and you're thinking to yourself, man, what am I going to eat? And then it dawns on you. I got some leftovers from yesterday. It's like it sits in its own juices and it marinades. And I mean, honestly, honestly, I feel like day two food, sometimes day three, depending on what you made, tastes better than when you first cooked it. I kind of live for leftovers a little bit. I, I really do. You know, especially if you do it old school like the grandmas used to and you heat it up in the oven. Man, leftovers smack. Left leftovers be leftovers be banging. But anyway, I digress. My point is there is a value to a woman that increases over time. It's not even just about your sexual abilities, it's about your skills as a woman. Because actually all of it increases and becomes even better over time that is the beauty of a woman besides why would a man really want to be in the bed with a woman who's too young to even be able to recognize the signs of a stroke I mean it seemed like nobody wants to bring that up like would Kevin Samuels have been alive right now if he had been with a 45 year old woman I just feel like she probably would have known what to do you know she would have got him a baby aspirin she would have started the CPR a little bit faster she probably would have noticed from the night before that you know he in anyway my point in what I'm saying is you want to be with a woman that can recognize the signs of a stroke, black man. I mean, especially if you're not going to have a primary care physician. These are just some things you might want to think about. However, we as women own these power dynamics. There's no way in the world these men would be trying to destroy us and crush our confidence and tell us we had no value to them if we had no value to them. You have to think about the pedestal that they're trying to put other women on. That pedestal is built on the beauty, grace, and resilience of us as black women. No one's ever concerned about telling someone that they don't feel like is on the level of the person that they're with, that they're not on the level of the person that they're with. There has to be a legitimate competition here for you to even mention it. And here's the thing. The competition has honestly already been one win 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 yeah. Fuck everything else win 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 i am not one of those people who wants to even regard other communities of women because they are not dealing with the same men that we are they are not coming out of the same family dynamics they are not coming out of the same economic community they are not coming out of the same political background they're not coming out of the same situations that we are and it's like I said black women have gone from by and large being sex workers drug addicts the same opioid crisis that everybody concerned about with white America right now you've already come out of it <laughs> with no help while they were criminalizing it so we're not going to sit here and go back and forth on these desirability politics the black woman is the first manifestation of god on earth 
You are the group of women who have always been desired by all men. You are the very gold standard of what female sexuality and sensuality is. It's just that simple. We know (laughs) black women, we have so much power in our pee that we are often fetishized by men where it just go all the way left. And it's like, um, I am still a human being and a person with a soul and a heart and feelings, you know? So we have to now begin to recognize where we have arrived at this point in our culture, the culture has put black women on the bottom rung. And this started in the 80s and 90s with rap videos. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Like our men have been subjecting us as sex symbols all the way up until this point in time. And now I was saying, clearly somebody's lying. Somebody feelings got hurt. And every time it's a conversation that I have with our male groups, that's what it is. Their feelings have been hurt. They've been rejected. They, it never really comes back to the actual attitudes of black women. It simply comes back time and time again to their access to us. Every conversation that I have about community building, always for whatever reason comes back to polygamy these men can't get enough of bpw as jasmine sullivan would say these men cannot get enough of gpe which is what we have, that same swag, that same prowess that our men own when they walk into the room, baby, you got it too. And anybody who's trying to tell you different is either gay or lying to you. They, they trying to manipulate you. I say it, I say it again, you've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. Deep down inside, they want you and they using reverse psychology on you. That's the only logical explanation for it. But it's time for us to turn the tables and take our power back. It's time for us to understand that we are wielding all the power that makes them desirable. But unfortunately, we're watching the vacation of black women and our image yet again undergoing the same slaughter that we've seen in other generations just for different reasons. We were objectified before as sex symbols, and now we're being told that we're not sexually it's, it's, it's reverse psychology. It is really narcissism at its best. If you've ever seen how narcissistic people backpedal and try to tell you you was never nothing when just a couple of minutes ago you was everything to them, you would understand the situation that we're in. But the best way for you to deal with people who try to manipulate you is to take away their power by owning your own. Don't know who take my power We're going to have to recognize that we can't put the power of marriage in the hands of these men. Now, that doesn't mean, women, we're going to be getting down on one knee. I'm down on bended knee. I'm down on bended knee. And proposing to these men. No, we're not going to do all that. But it just means that we are going to put the relationships that we have with these men into perspective. If you want to get what I like to call a little D and D, a little a little dick and date, then you do that. You know we got to stop letting these men act like we running up the odometer on our veg when baby they just a few pumps away from that thing laying on their thigh like a dead slug. So we're not going to negotiate with terrorists. 
Go fuck yourself. No, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We're just not going to do that because you got to ride it out with that slug for the rest of your life, possibly changing diapers on it, going to dialysis appointments. We're not going to do all that. A lot of these men are just one blood pressure pill away from that thing not even getting up no more. Okay, they are one blood pressure pill away from from not even being able to get that thing out the dugout. Okay, we're not going to do it. We're, we're going to stop having these conversations like we as women are not by and large. I can only speak for myself. And I'm running across a lot of folks whose um, BDE is, is, a, is a figment of their imagination. And a lot of times they'll try to make it a figment of yours. Yeah, no, the reality here is, as women, we have a lot more miles to go than these men do on these vagas. So if you want to enjoy yourself and have a good time with someone, then you do that. Not feeling like these men have to marry you because that, that's not necessarily winning an award. That's not necessarily the prize anymore. We have to now turn the tables and create a very unhealthy competition amongst these men to the death. Okay, to the death. To the death. If you really want to get out here and get this GPE that's out here, you're going to have to compete for it. You know, we've done the whole sympathy, have their back, coddle them, treat them like babies, and that time is over. Honestly, we do need to stop having babies for these men and completely shirek these men, completely shut these legs down. But... If you'd like to go out there and get some itches scratched from time to time, who am I to stop you? Who am I to tell you no? But stop letting these men shame you for that. Stop letting these men make you think your stock is going down because, baby, when you feed one of them applesauce, you're going to recognize who is the winner of the long game. But if we don't start taking back the power to determine how our lives are going to be, we have the houses, the resources, the jobs, the education. They on all these platforms complaining about how it used to be back in the old days because we needed them then. Because then they could bring that dead slug and lay it on you for life. And you kind of really didn't have no options. But you got options now. You got options. And on top of options, you got GPE, baby. We out here running it. And they running scared. And that's why they're mad and talking about you on every platform. So instead of talking about them on every platform and being worried about them and whether they want you or not, how about we go build this community, keep getting to these bags, start buying some property, start co-oping some business, start putting some pressure on the necks of these political systems and get Get to these bags. Take care of these kids. Start a revolution and raise a whole generation of women that are not going to take this nonsense <laughs> of these dusty, slow, knuckle dragging, narcissistic cavemen. Section leaders, what is our concept? One band, one sound. One band, one sound. If you are ready. To join the unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed revolution of women, go ahead and do me a favor and drop that fire headphones emoji in those comments. I look forward to engaging with you. Make sure you guys take a look in my Dropbox. My email is there if you have ideas for content that you would like to see. If you would like to connect with me in other ways, all that information is right down in that description box. But as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Until the next episode, class is now dismissed. Come on, get with it. Y'all know how we do it. All right, thank you for sticking with me until the very end of the episode. If you like this content, you might want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here. But until the next episode, live unplugged, 
unbothered and unleashed. You're not niggas.